Coming to the stage next, a great friend of mine. I'm glad he's here. You guys are gonna love him. He's a vet in the comedy game. Everybody start clapping it up right now. Give me a lot of love, a lot of energy. Give it up for my friend, Mr. Frank Townsend, y'all. How you doing? I like the fact that we got a nice mixed audience. It's a cool thing when you can see that in the room. Whenever you can walk into a room and see black people, white people, Latinos, and Asians, you know you're gonna have a good time in that room. <laughs> because you're gonna find out the truth about everybody. Find that you can put blacks and Latinos in the same room without a fight. Just get to do, we got white people that's gonna call the police. <laughs> Take pictures of the crime scene, so we got everything covered. I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret. Black people do not call the police. Do you know how bad things got to be for that table to call the police? They not gonna do it. I mean, look, if she gets into trouble right here, the sister that rolled with her ain't calling the police. One of these white ladies right here are gonna save your life. They will make a phone call. I mean, I'm all serious. They, they see crime and get involved with it. You ain't lowering their property value. Uh-uh, no. They'll see that fight and be like, oh, no, they won't. Well, we're down this comedy club. Let's just beat this man in there. Come and save him. Black people will watch a fight for a long time. Well, they do anything. But after a while, we will make a phone call. Just won't be the police. After we figure the dude added up, we'll be like, hold up, this ain't even right. <laughs> hey, yo, Joe. Man, I'm down this comedy show. They whooping this dude look just like your cousin. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me check, let me check. Hey, Keith. Yeah, Miss Keith, you better hurry up. He can't take much more of this. <laughs> gotta learn how to get along with people. We have to. You gotta find out what minorities want. And I can tell you, it's real simple. It's only one thing. All they want is a fair shot. If you make things fair, nobody has anything to complain about. We don't care about you talking about our bad stuff or our good stuff. Just talk about yours, too. We want it fair and even. It bothers me as a black man that whenever I see them on the news talking about the projects, they always want to show a bunch of black dudes hanging on the corner. They never show the white projects. <laughs> Y'all got them. Yeah. The hell you think a trailer park is? <laughs> that ain't nothing but the projects on wheels. <laughs> Ever, but wait, I asked that question. Well, I said that one time, and I asked, guy asked me after the show, he go, well, if black people are looking for affordable living, why don't more of them live in trailer parks? Because it is affordable living, and not a lot of black people live there. The best answer I can come up with is black people don't want to live anywhere where you can steal our whole house. <laughs> You out at the bar, you drinking, you having a good time, you dancing. Meanwhile, they pushing your house to the other side of the line. You come back to a dirt patch going, what the hell is my house? Besides, there's just one more set of rims to buy. I love it, even the white people laugh. They didn't even care about y'all. Most of the time when I tell that joke and there's white people in the room, they go, ha, ha, ha. Not sure, that's right, this is comedy, <laughs> laugh at all of this. Right, I gotta say something special about my mom. She's a, she's a big influence in my life. She's the reason that I am the way that I am. My mother had me when she was 19 years old. Literally single mom, teen mom, and she didn't want me to follow in her footsteps. As soon as I got old enough, she told me, you have to do this the right way, son. When you have a child, you need to take the time. Find a good woman. You fall in love with that good woman. You marry that good woman, and then you can have a child. So that's what I did. I took my time. Found a good woman, fell in love, we got married. Now I'm 40 with a two-year-old. <laughs> and teen pregnancy don't sound so bad from this side. <laughs> I'm telling you, because I'm really tired right now. I am. You know, I have friends that have their baby, they were 18, 19 years old. You know what they're doing right now? They having a blast. <laughs> they through. They back out in the street. They having a good time. They going back to the club. Hell, some of them ride to the club with their kids because their kids 21 now. <laughs> Meanwhile, I can't get a babysitter because my friends don't do that no more. <laughs> and 
Now you got one child. You got one little boy. Beautiful little boy. We want another child, but we don't know if we want to go through the labor again. So somebody suggested, you know, well, why don't you adopt? Which is a good idea because, you know, you give the child a good home, who needs a good home? Plus, it's like window shopping for kids. You get to pick the one you like, right? <laughs> no, you get to pick them up, chase them around, and uh, something wrong with him, you know, put him back on the shelf. <laughs> but they said, if you're going to do it, go get the kids from the adoption agency. You don't want a kid that's been trapped in the system. I'm like, okay, cool. So we set up an appointment with this place. It's supposed to be one of the best in the country. Beautiful facilities. We get there, meet the kids. The kids are lovely. We go down there to talk business. Did you all know the kids at the adoption agency ain't free? <laughs> no, they want you to pay for them. I don't know how you're going to set the price on this kid when the first set of parents didn't think he was all that hot in the first place. <laughs> which is why you got him, but you know. But you know, when I think about it, you know, it's a human being. You just can't hand over a human being. This is an actual person. They have to do background checks. That costs money. They have to get lawyers involved. That costs money. So I understand what's going on. And I figured, okay, I got 1500 in the bank. I can throw it a kid. It's nothing. You know, nothing for love. They wanted $33,000 to adopt a child. $33,000. That's a Mercedes Benz C Class. I know what I'm talking about. My car is a 91 Cadillac. I'm not paying that much money for no kid. $3,000? Kids don't cost that much? My first kid didn't cost half that much. My first kid cost what? Four Long Islands in a hotel room. That's all he cost. Kids don't cost $33,000. What the hell are you doing with the rest of this money? And the thing is, I can see if you were talking about a big kid. Maybe you can look with a big child. You can tell me something about it. Maybe you can tell me $33,000 worth of stuff. But I'm talking about a little guy. I want a two-year-old same age as my guy so they can grow up together. You know, at two years old, you don't know nothing about this kid trying to pawn off on me. You don't know if he's going to be tall, short, fat, skinny, dumb. You don't know nothing about this kid you're trying to push off on me. $33,000? I'm going to need me some guarantees. No, $33,000, you need to be better than the child I made. So they saw I was getting upset. So they tried to say something that would calm me down. So said, well, sir. We noticed that you and your wife were both African-American, which means you're probably going to want an African-American child. And we have good news for you, sir. African-American children don't cost this much. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're going to say that again. <laughs> hey, and I want y'all to look this up. I want you to look this up because this is true. They said there's no value or demand for our children, so they can't charge for a black child, but they would for a white child. Get this, they told me if I wanted a black child, it would be half the price of a white child. They told me instead of $33,000, I would pay about $16,000. That's still a Malibu. I'm still not paying that much money for no kid. What's your cost that much? I don't get that. And so now they're getting pissed with me, so. They said, well, look, dude, if you just want a cheap kid, why don't you get you one of third world country kids? Those are the cheapest ones we got. Really don't know how I feel about that, because, you know, I kind of wanted to buy American, you know. <laughs> I didn't want one of those foreign jobs. You know? And if I'm going to get a kid from a foreign country, it's going to change everything I do. I'm not getting the smallest kid I can find. I'm getting the biggest one I can find. <laughs> I'm going to make sure he comes from a war-torn country. I want him old enough to remember the struggle. I want him to appreciate everything he see in my house. <laughs> but you know, these American kids ain't appreciative of a whole lot of stuff. They can always find something else you can do for them, you know. Get a kid from overseas, you know, it don't take much to impress him. Indoor plumbing is the bomb. I mean, for real, you see that kid, you just flick a light switch. He don't know what you just did. He's like, oh my God, I just moved into Jesus' house. This is amazing. He can control the sun. <laughs> in your house no more. You just sit him on the porch with a machete. He ain't gonna let nobody mess this up, man. <laughs> Mailman better show ID. <laughs> and the fun part about it, the thing about all of that is, you have to be careful, though, because a lot of times people in this country have been getting to the point where 
what they do is they get children from other countries as a showpiece. It's, it's a status symbol now to say, my child came from Taiwan, my child came from any other foreign country, just to, like a status symbol as a child. You know, Angelina Jolie got a lot of black who adopted those kids. Well, no, seriously, because she adopted like 10 kids from third world countries. And people in America got pissed with her. They were like, well, why did you adopt any of these American kids? He said, because you want $33,000 for these American kids. <laughs> $33,000, I can buy the whole village over there. <laughs> Grown people included. Hey, I'll peace out. My name is Frank Townsend. Enjoy the rest of your evening.